Hi, welcome to the Von Liter Podcast. You will watch us drinking one liters of beer whilst talking about shies. Please like and subscribe. Welcome to the Von Liter. Prost. Prost. Clinky. Clinky is welcome complete. Back to the Von Liter Podcast. We got a lot to cover off today. Some of the stuff is going to be pretty. We're going to be pretty behind on this in terms of news that's out. We got to discuss first of all the imploded submarine. <laughs> <laughs> then we have to discuss, sadly, Joe Stedick's death. I got oh, I got yeah. some crazy shit around that. I never asked you about that. Yeah, yeah. And but then, you had showed me a video of his like maybe a month ago, and then boom, he's dead. Yeah. And you didn't even tell me, like, I saw that shit on Instagram. Or did yep. you send me a... No, I think I sent you him because of how crazy his fucking anatomy and zero body fat that's was. That's right. He had the ripple chest, right? Oh, yeah. That's him. Yeah. He yep. had that alien chest. Then we got to discuss um, a door on Mars. Yeah, I got And you. obviously, uh, Elon Musk versus Mark Zuckerberg in a UFC fight. That's what? <laughs> Have you heard about that? Have they agreed to fight each other? Yes. So one You're of joking. them, yeah, one of them calls the other out. Who who, on, who initiated? On, um, I think I think Elon said like something like I'll I'll fight Mark Zuckerberg, and Mark Zuckerberg takes a screenshot of it, posts it on his Instagram story or something, and just says, uh, "Name a place." I ain't no bitch. Yeah, I ain't so, no bitch. Like, Musk, <laughs> and apparently. The Coliseum reached out to them and said, hey, you guys should do the fight here. In Italy? <laughs> You're fucking joking. So then, I mean, like, nobody oh knows. If it, I think I think it's at the stage where everyone's like, is that actually happening? But apparently people have spotted them training with, like, UFC professionals. <laughs> so they're going to they're gonna fight. Do you know what needs to be done, though? <laughs> Musk and... Um, and alien lizard boy, I can't remember what he's in Zuckerberg. If you're listening, you need to make this a free to air watch. Oh, big time! Don't ask anyone to pay money because you do. You guys don't need the revenue. All right? Hell no! Fuck you. <laughs> that I is, mean, that is I mean, some of the enough, best news I've heard in a long time. Fair enough. If it's like a ticketed event to be there, sure, because you got to pay for the venue and shit. But it, I fair. mean, they they could pay for the venue. Yeah. It wouldn't even. Well, there'd be a lot of fears around going to the Coliseum because there'd be a lot of issues with like I didn't trying think to they could do a fight there, preserving right? the Coliseum, bro. Like, is that still? To... It's not being used. Is that was that just a joke? Like well, when I heard that, I was like, the Coliseum? Well, do they know... do events there? Yeah, I don't think they. No, they shouldn't. They shouldn't because like there's a lot of there's a lot of issues. Maybe it's all like, part of the joke. Degradation. But oh, if they'll they fight, did, it'd be other. great. But you, you know, threads that they just released. That's like the. It threads? was threads. Do you know of threads? Like clothing threads? No, no. Oh, you don't know about threads. Bro, I've been, this is I've like, been bloom alive. You, yeah, you've been living under, you've been going on that airplane mode. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Disconnect. I love that shit, bro. But no, threads is like Facebook basically copied Twitter. So they've released a new thing as like a side chain of Instagram, which is threads, which is just sharing text. So it's exactly Twitter but owned by Meta. So that's taken a big hit on Elon because of the, I don't know, I don't even know, I don't follow the Twitter stuff, but apparently there's been some restrictions, people aren't happy with Twitter, blah, 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 brands aren't getting the awareness on Twitter, and now Threads is like, boom, and Elon made a post about it and was like, because apparently they just basically copied a whole bunch of code of how Twitter works. So there might be a bit of a lawsuit there? Potentially, can you so, sue someone for code in like infringed? I like, don't know. Replication. I don't know how that works, but maybe they should just be like, "Look, whoever wins this fight owns Twitter and Threads." Yeah, that is a noble like, <laughs> like it whoever the loses, you they still would never go. be able to do that. Because imagine all the fucking lawyers in the background going, "Uh, no, nine, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah." <laughs> no, definitely not. Yeah, <laughs> definitely not on the table. That is hectic, dude. Yeah, I think um. Wait, hang on a minute. I remember seeing a video ages ago, maybe a year or two ago, where uh, um, Zuckerberg was talking about having like that 
VR thing for Facebook where you can meet in a room and like... Oh, yeah, that's still happening. That's, that, that's meta, right? Yeah. What's going on with that? The metaverse. That? Oh, it's still in development. They um, Hurry the fuck up, cunt. Well, they've got their AR, uh, sorry, VR goggles and shit that they are being released. And now Apple's done How much done are they going to charge? The how, one? Hang on. How much are they going to charge for those? Because like Facebook is like Zuckerberg can... If I Zuckerberg think, charges 30, 40 bucks, I'm in. No, we're talking like a, this thing is like buying a Oculus, buying a MacBook. Yeah, this the Oculus. Well, it'll fuck be like, him then. It'll be like 1500 US. He doesn't need any more money. But then Apple Apple's have also made, have you seen the Vision Pro? Negative. Oh, fuck. Oh, we need to get a, Phil, oh, can you just, fuck. can you uh, enhance the screen and get a, get an image of the. I will put an image of the Oculus somewhere here or here, wherever there's room. Can you also add Mark Zuckerberg smiling in my palm for a second? <laughs> hey, smiling idiot, lower the prices on the Meta goggles. <laughs> All right, thank you. But Apple's goggles mm-hmm. are going to be like three and a half grand. And so the uh, MKBHD, the tech reviewer on YouTube, I watched him and his first impressions on it. And apparently it, it's got eye tracking. So it puts up a menu in front of you and you just look and apparently it just selects exactly where you're looking. And then it's got sensors on the outside that detect your hands. So basically you look at a a little icon and then you go like this. You tap your two fingers together and it selects it. I love that. So you're just like boom, boom, wherever you're looking. And he said it's the most accurate, crazy thing he's ever experienced. Bro, think about about how medicine can incorporate that as well. Like, do you know how, uh, I think there's a, there's a study recently about Australia as well. Australia being one of the biggest countries who are, um, investing in like medicinal, like, um, uh, like, like mushrooms, right? For yeah, like yeah. psychological, oh, yeah. psychological, um, um. Psilocybin treatment. Psilocybin treatment. Yeah. What's it called? Um, uh, when, when. Uh, Therapy. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to think of the word when you. Uh, when you damage your foot and you have to go into... Oh, rehab. Rehab. Yeah, yeah, rehabilitation. No, rehabilitation, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Why, don't, why couldn't I think of that word? Um, can you imagine that plus some kind of like simulation where you're in this place and like everything's like boop, 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 at mm. your disposal? Oh, like if you were paralyzed or you couldn't walk or yeah. something? Imagine do just you, being able to... Do you remember seeing a while ago, maybe at the start of the year, they had they had someone, they actually had the wires in his head. I don't think it was anything to do with Musk. It could have been. Oh. But they had that guy walking. I didn't see that, but Neuralink is Neuralink. doing their first. Yeah. That is Musk. It's it doing was. Their I'm first sure it was. Yeah, there was, a, there was a gentleman. Human trials. And he was able to walk. It was obviously very unsturdy at the, at the first, but like, because it was just like. Yeah, but that shit. Your brain has to learn how to send signals to it, and it ha- it probably adapts as well. So oh, he's just going to relearn. Bro, that will take that. That won't take more than a year, dude. And that guy's going to be sprinting. We're gonna there's there's gonna be some crazy shit in dude. the near future. Yeah, like near future. We discussed that. We we both. I think we both agreed. Well, I certainly feel this way, but I'm sure you agreed. You have to listen to another podcast to find this episode. But we spoke about. We kind of live in an all right time. We certainly don't live in a bad time where there's like logic isn't a solid thing, right? Yeah, yeah. Like we're not medieval times or anything. <laughs> However, we don't live when there's flying cars or we don't live when there's like cures for like cancers and shit. But we're living in a time where we're seeing that stuff be developed. So I think we're living in a good time when we're young enough to experience enough of that stuff. However, I wish we were living at a time where that shit was at our beck and call, you know? Dude, yeah, exactly. When it was like affordable. Totally. Like if it was like the technology was so good and then everyone starts doing it and then it's affordable because right now we're like on the cusp, but because shit's happening cusp. so slowly, yeah, we're not, we're not that impressed by shit. Yeah, yeah. But the other day I saw a video of the, and you can do this as an experience now, but it costs you a few thousand dollars, but we're living in a time where there's fucking real life jetpacks. Yeah. People are flying around with jetpacks. Like not just the ones in the in the ocean with the tube on it. Like legit jetpacks. Legit jetpacks. What, what what they've got two they've got these two big things on their arms. So they're attached to the big backpack. You put it on, it's got a stand, you jump into it, and you put your hands into these two big things, and they're jets as well. So your hands oh, are like controlling you. It. It's crazy, dude. What's fueling it exactly? Like I'm pretty sure it's like an actual jet. So it has like a tank of 
petrol or whatever. Okay, so there's a uh, first of all combustion. <laughs> Second <laughs> yeah. of all, what kind of fumes? Right What's that doing that to humans? And like, how do they how do they keep it from heating up all the the like and melting oh, it would your get fucking hot. legs? It yeah. would get hot. Yeah. yeah. But how crazy, because right. that shit was like computer game stuff. We oh, were like, yeah. Oh, yeah, this would be cool, right? Yeah. Next minute, we're here. Yeah. We're doing it. I mean, you don't have free hands. So if you're doing it for military stuff, you're like, where is my gun? I don't know. Yeah, Tony Stark style, eh? But they're using it for like rescues and shit. But think about this. Yeah, rescues. They're already using it for rescues. Hold like, that thought. Like mountain climbers and shit where you couldn't get a helicopter close enough. They go, yeah. Hey, bro. <laughs> I got you. Yeah, chain them, chain them around that thing. Or get like get like an extra rope or whatever. Yeah, you just mentioned that if it was in a war zone, right? But if they've got both hands are using to control that, and then they've got a VR headset over the oh. way with the fucking predator cannon on their shoulder, <laughs> looking at a target, blink, neutralize. <laughs> Perfect. Blink. Yeah. Well, not even blink. Like, what if in inside the little controllers you just got a little trigger button? Yeah. For your thumb, and you you're flying around. You look at something. Dude, I don't think I don't think those kind of like when we're talking about um Neuralink, I don't think it would be that difficult for humans to get their head around it. Because if you think about like driving a manual Definitely not. Think about driving a manual. People like, you know, oh, I have to I have to put the clutch down, change the gear, do this, do that. I have to fucking Well it would think about typing. Have you seen the you know? videos of the monkeys learning it? Mm. So they do the monkey tests with the Neuralink where Oh, Neuralink tests on monkeys. Yeah. Get the fuck out. So the monkey has the Neuralink in it, but they give it a little joystick and then they give it a little game where they got to like do the little dot and get Is that the, the one where they're like boom, 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 boom. Yeah. And it, got, and, and, it, and it wins at the game and it gets a little, there's a little tube and a little bit of banana comes out like mushed banana. And it's like, mm, yum, yum, yum. And so it's, it's like winning the game, winning the game. And then basically it, the brain is obviously thinking my hand's got to do this. My hand's got to do that. Then they just take the joystick away put the game on the screen and the monkey goes, oh, I got to do this. And the brain's sending the same signals and it's still playing the game with its mind. That's a monkey, dude. Yeah. Monkeys so are if a t- monkey can Monkeys are hyper intelligent, but we've just got that extra leg up, dude. Dude, you know what else is hyper intelligent? Oh, fuck. We're killing it. Dolphins? Fucking octopus. Oh, yeah. Do you know there's a theory that some scientists reckon that octopus might have come from space. Yeah, I've and seen like, that. Not, and jellyfish like, too, dude. Yeah. And dude, not jellyfish like... have no brain. What the fuck? <laughs> and some of them are immortal. Yeah. Some Star- of them just... Some starfish are immortal, dude. Just not basically... starfish, sorry. Um, uh, seahorses can, like, some seahorses can they just, just regenerate. Re- regenerate forever. Crazy. That's fucking crazy. But, like, yeah. So, like, not even as, like, oh, they must be from space. Like, they legitimately think, whoa, this could have been... They could have been like octopus eggs or something frozen in an asteroid mm, comes down. Perfectly they preserved. hatch. Yeah. Yep. So like legitimate theories mm. because they're part of, I wrote this down. Give me two seconds. They're part of. Um, Can I just say real quick? S- mm. Hold that thought. But our idea of cryogenics, right? Freezing ourselves mm. and then <coughs> defrosting ourselves in the future <coughs> could be completely different to some kind of different spacefaring civilization. They might have something completely cold that slows slows our metabolism down to like to the point where we're like not really breathing. But maybe there's another element involved that we haven't even got on the periodic table that can somehow keep keep a living organism yeah. like like a stasis. Well, we have no idea. There could be so many elements out there that just do crazy shit. For real. Because so they're, uh, it, the name, I didn't know this, but they're cef, um, cephalopods. Cephalopods, yep. So it's like the same as like snails and stuff. But yep, they yep. reckon when they look at Earth's history or what we know of history, like the way cephalopods have evolved, they reckon the octopus chain of it is too advanced to have been able to evolve True. from the same branches. So this is some scientists and others say like, no, they oh, branched this off, and that. Yeah, they branched off earlier, up. blah, blah, yeah. blah. Yeah. So that, that's because octopus, like they, when people study octopus, I watched this video the other day. This dude, he almost got torn to shreds by a bunch of them. That guy who was a no, diver. No, I didn't see that, but oh, okay. that's crazy. Dude, I didn't realize, but some squid move in, like move like jellyfish, <clears throat> huge migrations, hundreds of thousands of them. 
That's weird because on this video that I watched, did they like they're hyper intelligent there, and the way they test it is like most creatures on Earth, almost all creatures on Earth, they learn things from their parents when they're born. Like, hey, this is how you do this. This is how you do that. And the rest is instinct. And that's it. That's how they live their life. It's a crazy strategic instinct. That yeah. Got, so dude. we've been able to evolve so much because we... If we monkey gained, see, monkey do. Well, we gained the ability to pass on information, right. which other animals haven't. Survival, yeah. Yeah. So that's the only thing that octopus haven't done. So they kind of come out... They learn nothing. They have to figure life out from scratch every time they're born. But so they're, every new octopus is like, hey, I'm new. But so they are you them, saying despite that, their thought processes and how they operate is so complex? Yeah. Right. So they're super intelligent, but they don't have the pass on part of it. They don't have the social aspect that we have. Wow. Otherwise, they could probably be ruling the world right now. Yeah. Because they can, their bodies are far superior to ours. Really? Like, like they can durable come on, and stuff? They can come on land. Mm -hmm. They can squeeze through any gap oh, yeah. that is big enough for their beak to go through. I've, I've got a story for you. They'll be able to squish through it. All right. So I'm watching. Finish what you're going to say first. So I was going to say they give them problems to figure out, and this is how they distinguish whether it's instinct or whether it's intelligence. Because if you say it's instinct, it's something that could happen in nature and it's been passed through their DNA. So, like, for instance, they put a bottle with a cork in it and they're like, okay, well, that's like as if a rock was blocking their prey and they put a crab inside it with a cork on it. So the octopus is like, oh, there's a crab in there. I need to get to it. How do I do it? Pop the cork off. I'm in. Eats the crab. And that's another interesting thing is like a crab, dude, of all. They are so soft and they eat a crab because they poison it. Insertion, They pierce yeah. it and poison it and then just get their little beak and just eat the fleshy bits Flesh. of the crab. I've got an interesting story that that adds to that as well, that predator instinct of them. This is years ago, <clears throat> and whenever the topic of squids always came up, I always use this example because it was fascinating to me. I was watching Nat Geo. I don't know how old I was, probably 10 or 11, right? 12 so ages even. ago. 12 yeah. even. And I remember <laughs> seeing it was 12. like it was like in the uh, uh San Jose Marine Biology Facility, um an interesting thing happened. Um it was like it was like a big marine biology room, and they had like um, fish tanks all in the circumference of this room. So it was like a lab laboratory, and then they had like marine aquatic biology, uh, marine um, species and aquatic species everywhere, different types of fish, squid, everything. Mm. And they kept finding that uh, every every day a scientist would come in and they noticed that certain amount of fish were missing from yes. each tank. You seen this? This video? might be the same. I probably watched the same a cutout video. of this same one, yeah, probably. Bro, and then they found out, and then they set up a camera. This squid crept up, pulled itself out of the tank, crept down, went in, ate a fish, hopped out, closed the lid, went back into its own uh, uh, habitat, and closed it up. The thing was like, well. I have the ability to escape, but why would I need to? I've got a food source here. Yeah. They're not harming me. <laughs> exactly. And like the thing, what what they say in that clip that I watched is that they, as we're observing the octopus, it's observing us. So it's going, oh, yeah, yeah, they go home. Right. I'm alone now. Yep. I can come out. I can <laughs> eat the fish. Mm -hmm. But so to finish off what I was saying about instinct versus intelligence Instinct is like, oh, the cork is like as if a rock is blocking my prey. But then they do the screw-on jar. There's no screw-on jars in nature. And they can't, and they get, put that, they can't get past it? They do. How the fuck do they do How do they so do they, they, How long does it take? Did it give them a time lapse of how long no, it took No, it doesn't. Them? It doesn't give me a time, but it, it's basically feeling. Do you know each one of their tentacles has a separate mini brain? You're joking. It can make decisions on its own. <laughs> so basically its main brain is just like a hub, like a center that says you do this you do that so they would be going in with this jar problem going all right what do you got okay there's yep round thing okay the thing's inside and it knows it's like well the crab's inside so there must be a way to get in definitely an alien dude so then they come up and they sit on top of the whole jar and the thing and they work out that it's like oh if i Rotate. put pressure this way and they mm. open up the jar like, meanwhile the crab's like fuck <laughs> Help me! You can literally see the crab in there like, ah, ah. Yeah. Dude, can I give you a, a, a visual, a, an audible, <coughs> audi, audible representation of what the crab was saying? Give it to me. All right, this is the crab. Ready? 
Hang on a moment. Please hold. I need like elevator music on one of these buttons. Hang on a minute. I got the fucking, I got the sound of the crowd for you guys. <laughs> Get me out! Bro, that, like, the shit, it's always a thing. It's like, um, if you take a bunch of, like, nerds, right, and you throw them in a football field with, like, a handful of, ath one athletic guy and 20 nerds, the athletic dude's just going to, like, cream them, right? Because mm. not only is it practice and intelligence, but it's also a lot of its instinct, right? Mm. They, let's say it's a sport, a newly invented sport, right? But it's physical. And they chuck an athlete in there with five nerds, five dudes who don't work out and don't have good nutrition. And they said, we're not going to teach you the rules. All you got to do is get this ball here, throw that, da, da, da. Instinct's going to win over, right? Given time though, given, given an extra, maybe an extra hour or an extra 25 minutes, intelligence is going to win over that. Yeah. So that's It'll why I like, strategy. despite all that shit, I'm so grateful that they're not a communal, um, communal species like us because like but, but could you imagine like who's to say that they would be they would want to get rid of us they may not but like imagine but there's if, a reason why they 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 stay at the bottom of the ocean and we're up here dude because it's clear they're clearly like okay yeah, but they've survived for a lot longer than us if they've been around for millions of years that's true but because they're just like okay we'll just go in the ocean yeah but they've also, at some point, some of them must have communicated with each other that, like, if you go too high, much like us, we've been told if you go too low, you're fucked. And someone's probably told them if you go too high, there's some creatures up there, you're fucked. Mm. You know? So it's like a mutual respect thing, right? It's crazy. It's got to be. <laughs> it's crazy. And look, I'm not even joking around. I, I, I'm not even joking or bullshitting when I say I, I can... I'm, I can happily entertain the idea that they might be an extraterrestrial species that have oh, somehow time. survived. And like, imagine if they do eventually evolve, like if we survive through whatever the planet's doing and then they eventually evolve and then we're like, holy shit. Okay. Okay, guys, we get it. We won't hunt you anymore. And then we manage to communicate somehow. And then it's just like the earth is just octopus and humans, whatever we've evolved to by then. Because they got fucking nine brains, you know? They're just like... <laughs> mm, it's creepy, hey? It's fucking creepy. Well, we only think it's creepy because it's different to us, yeah. right? I think we'd win, though, dude. We got viral weapons. We got we got nukes, knives, sharp sticks. Yeah, but that's because they haven't started planning yet. Yeah. Imagine they when they start some, planning. They'd probably have fucking... Uh, nuclear silos in the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> exactly. like, they're bringing Godzilla up to fight. Some fucking <laughs> shit yeah, down. dude, they could make some kind of like oxygen killing machine, you know, because they're oh. like, okay, these creatures here breathe oxygen. We could neutralize that. Imagine or if they just make underwater nukes and create tsunamis. <laughs> and then, yeah, they'd fucking... They're like, oh, they've got a nuclear facility on land. Mm. What happens if we just put a fucking... One million tons of water over the top of it. True. <laughs> Dude, we're writing like a Hollywood blockbuster film right now starring Stallone. The Octopi. The, the, the Octopi human. Apocalypse, yeah. O oct octopolypse. <laughs> I fuck, I don't know. <laughs> All right. Bottom of the ocean. The submarine. The submarine? <laughs> the yeah, let's talk about the submarine. submarines. Did you, did you see that video of um, James Cameron? Just... Just giving them like James Cameron wasn't Doing a dick like about a, it, but he was just disappointed, man. Yeah, because he'd spent so much time and effort shining a light on deep sea um, exploration, and then they go ahead and just go, "Oh, you know, you know, it's not completely tested, and but I've got these alloys that I think are going to be really durable." Yeah, but he called it an hour in. Did you see? Did you hear that part? No. So I and, didn't pay too much attention to it. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't get on the hype train of like people mocking them. But I just thought no, I it's a that. terrible thing. I'm not interested. I hate that. Yeah. We live and we learn as human beings. Like next, as fucked up as it is, they sacrificed themselves un I unwillingly. So the next people won't make such a mistake. I'm talking about the search. The search oh. was bullshit. Oh, okay, go on. So he, as soon as the sub lost communication. Which was how long into the, to the. 
I don't I don't know the exact time, but they lost communication and James Cameron got word of it because he's got lots of friends in that field because apparently he's oh, been bro. down like 30 something times yeah, yeah. I reckon, down to the Titanic. I reckon James Cameron wouldn't have just been sitting at home just sipping a margarita. I reckon he would have been he would have been fully all over it. Yeah. So he would have been he would have been like Walt like yeah, yeah. second by second exactly. confirmation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said that. He he shot out a few emails, shot out a few messages, like, what's going on? Yep. There's facilities, which I had no idea about and most people don't know about. There's facilities that monitor just sounds in the ocean. Yeah. So one's for research and with some for security. Earthquakes and shit. And, and like, military. So oh, in yeah, case yeah. there's submarines. Subs, yeah, yeah. So there's devices that just pick up sound 24-7. So he's shot out a few messages and apparently there was a big bang sound right at the time where they said they lost communication with the sub and he explains that this sub it had the main submarine and then there's a communication box with with, like with a its black own box? yeah with its own concealed like compartment have so have they found that yet well no but the fact that they lost it means if they had lost communication sorry i think it was the I think there's two separate things. It was the controlling the sub and then the actual comms because they lost both at the same time. It was like, there's no way that would be such a small chance that you would lose communications with both those isolated systems unless it was crushed, mm. imploded. So he, about 60 minutes after they said it'd gone missing, he's like, yeah, it's imploded. They're all gone. But they just Called dragged it. out this search for days. It probably cost millions of dollars. Why haven't they found it yet? Did it was it I lost near debris. the Titanic? I think they found debris. The debris, but not the entire thing. Like where's the No, like, I think they found like crushed submarine. I, I didn't I Human remains would be that. almost non existent, right? Apparently I just saw a, he, a um headline that said possible human remains, but psh, like I stopped looking after I heard that because why They'd the be fuck? disintegrated, right? And then fish would have got involved and devoured. Yeah. Yeah. And then why the fuck would they drag out the search for so long? Like, that would have cost millions. Like, they would have sent ships. They would have sent subs down. They would have sent all this fucking... I think they were doing planes that were doing... Trying to send, um, I don't know, radar signals into the water to see if they could find it. But, like, all these Waste resources... Waste taxpayers' money, bro. That... And then the conspiracies come in where it's like, oh, the U.S. passed a bunch of laws or something while this was going on. So the the media's distracted. Let's just keep this on the front page What's while going we just on do in Ukraine, this in the bro? background. Yeah. yeah. So I didn't yeah. read into that, but totally plausible. Dude, totally people, plausible. People like, we've all seen spy movies where like someone walks and then drops a briefcase and then the next person sits down at the park bench and picks it up. Exactly. I agree. Like, if it's some a major event going on where they need to conspiracy, like, hide things, they can totally paint it in the media. But people don't give a fuck these days. People are always looking at their phones. People are always looking down. People yeah, don't pay attention. They're looking at the media. So you can get away with that shit and not need a big fiasco in the media, as far as I'm concerned. But it's much safer. Because it like, is. If it's, you're, it's a if fall. You're, it's a if fall. you're a journalist, right, and you're trying to be different, you're going to be looking out for that shit. But if something big like a sub going missing near the Titanic and imploding is going on, then you might be like, oh, let's write about that. But everyone's like, whoa, 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 there's a sub missing. We got to do this. We got to cover it. You can't be writing about, oh, the government has decided to do this Mm. today. We don't care, man. There's a billionaire and his child down in the water. It's not. He was long dead. Oh, yeah. I was kind of happy about that because they were like, the oxygen's going to run out. I was like, could you imagine the terror of just floating Mm. in a little tube? In darkness. In darkness, not knowing what the fuck's going on. But they would have been dead from it in less than a second. Would the, would the, the interior, like, I don't know what, what metal or whatever it is, would that have killed them or would it have been the pressure of just killed them before the the, uh, the actual Dude, the, material? The, the submarine went from submarine to a grape to this in like, I think it, I think they said like 0. 0.04 of a second or something. So it'd, be like, ah. so it'd be like, yeah, that click sound would have just been. Right. So you so got the no sub chance of even knowing. The sub could have gone from like an eight meter thing to what, a two meter device? Like just, or just, smaller. Just, just 
whatever metal it was made of compacted. Like a like a as if it went through a through one of those car crushers. Like a Pepsi. Yeah. Okay. So it would have been real quick. quick. Yeah. (laughs) Real quick. Rest in peace. Yeah. Rest in peace. Can you alter my voice not too deep, but make it epic? (laughs) Check, 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 check. 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 There we go. May 18th, 2022. NASA's Curiosity Mars rover used its masked camera or mask cam to capture this mound of rock nicknamed East Cliffs on May 7th, 2022. The 3,466 Martian day or SOL, S-O-L, of the mission. The mound on Mount Sharp has a number of naturally occurring open fractures, including one roughly 12 inches, 30 centimeters tall, and 16 inches, 40 centimeters wide, similar in size to a dog door. These kinds of open fractures are common in bedrock, both on Earth and on Mars. All right, I got to change it back because now I'm really curious. Curiosity is currently investigating a region on Mount Sharp on Mars that may hold evidence of a of a major change from wetter to drier conditions in Mars's earlier history. The main panorama in these images that they've sent us in regards to this door that they've found included here was stitched together using 113 images from Mars Cam's left lens. So this is a little device that's yeah, yeah. taking I- images. Dude, I love it's we're 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 so we're in such an infantile state, not even infantile. We're in such a fractional little nothing state of time in history in the universe. But to us it's like, oh my God, we have images of space. Where in the future images is of of like People are going to look at this and go, oh, my God, they were just looking at some random rock on Mars. Here's what I'm thinking, right? Yeah. Could you imagine what everyone's brain is going to have to do, have to do, if they send, like, solid evidence or, like, solid images and just say, check it out. There's an actual door that had to have been created by something living Mm. on Mars. Mm. Like, what the fuck are we supposed to even think? Either. There's been people there earlier already from a new, different government. If they're government, not still around. Or, like, I'm talking from Earth, oh, potentially. From Earth. Yeah, yeah. Or it's something that used to actually live on Mars that is not connected to Earth. Yeah. So we're going to have to come to terms with either of those theories. Mm. And it's going to be real. Oh, yeah. Like, we're going to have to adjust our entire thinking if that is the case. Do you know what I think about that stuff? The biggest impact, and it's not for me, but it's just... It's an interesting thing to consider, and it's a it could be a big impact for some people, mainly the younger generation. Mm. Religion. Oh, oh yeah. Think about how it impacts a young Christian person, for instance. I'm only using Christian because we come from a white Anglo-Saxon society, right? Mm-hmm. Curiosity is currently investigating a region of Mount Sharp that may hold evidence of a major change from wetter to dry conditions. The idea, the idea, and the theories, and even I'm not sure if it's it's factual evidence that moisture is found on Mars. Love it. It's always been, uh, is, hasn't it always been evidence of potential frozen water? Yeah. Like ice? Frozen water, yeah. 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 So at some point they had some kind it's of climate. H2O on there. Yeah. The main panorama included here, and we will show an image of the what I'm showing now from I'll Phil. try and find the video. I saw a video of a spinning image of the rover, like taking a high definition video, just mm-hmm. circling around on Mars mm-hmm. with... I think it's, yeah, okay, that's the panorama stuck together. The website you can use is (coughs) mars.nasa.gov. Please continue. So it circles around with audio, and it's real audio from Mars, (laughs) and all you hear is just crazy winds. So we think of like, oh, yeah, we would go on Mars, and we'd be like, oh, my God, we're on Mars. But it would be like, it would probably be like the most severe windstorm you've been on Oh yeah, Earth or like when you know when you go to the beach mm-hmm. and there's sand and, and there's cuts, a lot of wind and, and it, it hits stings. your legs. Yeah, that, but just the entire time, just yeah, just low pressure, high pressure environments from cold to even colder and just air moving the entire time. You know, it's funny when you when you get to a country you've never been before. You're like, oh, this is it. Air's different, smells kind of funky, but I'm in a, I'm on another country on Earth. Yes. Can you imagine you get to Mars and you're like, oh, this is kind of anticlimactic. It's like I'm in Arizona. 
But then but you're it like, wouldn't be. It I'm would on be another so... fucking planet. But you wouldn't feel like that. You nah. would just be like, yeah, 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 <laughs> exactly. What the hell's going on? So you'd have to literally. It'd take years and years and years and years for them to drop experimental materials down onto Mars and see, okay, this can withstand these kind of conditions for this amount of time. So they wouldn't just send a dummy down wearing a certain Kevlar and say, this has survived. We've, we've, we've extracted this dummy and noticed that it took uh, three months before a tear got in this suit. We're going to have to work on that. You know, uh, yeah, we have exactly. no chance. A uh, Philip, my my dear dear friend my my <laughs> dear friend Philip, my my brother we're not we're never going to Mars, bro. We'll oh never, no, we'll no never reach way, Mars. no way. Do you know, do, do yeah. you hear about like like because Elon studies this shit? Mm-hmm. It must if kill you want to go there. It if you want to go Elon there to know a genius like that with such crazy ambition beyond Earth and human human minds, it must kill Elon to know. That he can never reach what he wants. It's I don't think like, he wants to go there. I think he wants humanity right. to eventually be able to do that in case of there's something that's going to collide with Earth. Yeah. Let's just chuck a couple of people on Mars. So we can survive. So yeah. if Earth gets hit and yeah. gets fucked up, we'll just continue surviving here. What's the saying? It's like humans build, humans plant trees Humans plant seeds for trees they'll never sit under or something like mm. that. Same thing applies. Yeah. 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 But he was talking about if we wanted to ever inhabit it, we got to warm it up. So he's talking shit like creating artificial suns mm-hmm. with like nuclear bombs, basically. Nuclear reactors on either pole of Mars. And you better do some constant, serious research about that, Constant bro. nuclear explosions to heat this planet up. Like That's crazy. It's yeah. some crazy shit. Oh, fuck yeah. But like. There's other crazy shit that we thought was far too crazy, like maybe even a jetpack. Mm. Do you think, I, I wonder, like, it probably does weigh on his mind, obviously, because he's, he's, he's threatening to throw hands with one of the other most influential rich people in the world. But, like, I feel like... I think does, that's just fun, e- though. It, yeah, exactly. Does Elon Musk have so much crazy shit that we don't know about going on that something like, oh, I bought Twitter... And everyone goes on about Twitter and Elon Musk is allowing all this speech and hatred that Elon's like, oh, I'm not giving it energy because I'm taught, I'm communicating with people who have communication with aliens that, um, like, you know, like Elon Musk's like, I've been, and I've, I've been able to not infiltrate, but I've been given access to a secret society of, hu- of humans who actually have an alien who helps us communicate and talk to other aliens mm. out there in space. And now I'm able to share my ideas with aliens and then he's like, he leaves there and he gets in his fucking space car that he drive or his, his private jet that costs 160 million. And he's flying back to like, I don't know, Cancun or wherever the fuck he lives. Mm. And he's like, oh yes, this primitive little device called a phone. After I spoke to Klinglachangluch well, all day. I don't, I don't and think- he picks up his phone and goes, oh, <laughs> that's right. I bought Twitter. Here's the hey, thing. hey, fuck you, Mark Zuckerberg, yeah. you little you bitch, you know? Like here's the thing. Right. I don't believe that Elon has any evidence that there is alien life. That we know of. That well, he says this. So I'm sure uh, unless it's like people say a lot so, of things. Phil. Unless it's so secretive that he can't say it, but he's like that I don't believe that there's any evidence that there's aliens that we know of. I don't know if he believes there's aliens, but have you heard have you heard Brian Cox talking about this? You know Brian Cox. He's like he's the health guy. The super no, he's like the super space guy. Oh uh, hey, let me look at let me look at l- look up his face. C-O-X? But I'll tell you what he said. Brian C O X. Yeah, look up his face. But I'll tell you what he said. Right, the actor. No, I'm pretty sure it's Brian Cox. Oh, this guy, the British guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I know so, Brian Cox. Yeah. So he says, "Hang on, hang on. Yes, let me finish real quick." Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Before we go on, because we're getting off topic. No, no, we're getting. I'm mean, basically continuing on space and aliens. We found a yeah, yeah, but we're getting off topic of the of what's going on with Mars. We've got, we got a little picture oh, yeah, of let's... a door in Mars. Picture here, over my hand. Boom. Figure C is zoomed in on a dog door shaped open, fracture, shaped open a fracture as a three D, anaglyph. Show me. Is it, does it look like a door? Or is it just randomly shaped rock crack that looks like a door? I'd say like it's a, a randomly shaped rock crack because it's not the best photo imaging, right? Oh, uh, yeah, I get it. 
And the way the light's hitting one of the sides looks like it's a very straight read, edge. Read the last bit. It says paragraph, oh, image D. Read that. Dog door, read image that D. Sentence. Figure yeah. D is the same 3D anaglyph, is it? Anaglyph, yeah. Figure C, but with annotations indicating the approximate width, height, and depth of the... Yeah, okay, so okay. they haven't specified what the door is. They've just said we've got imaging of it. Okay. Yeah. So tell me about Brian Cox and what he thinks. So Brian, Brian Cox says... There's about 20 billion, well, this is all estimating, right? There's about 20 billion Earth-like planets in our universe that we estimate. So to get to life form like us, our Earth had to be stable for long enough for us to evolve to the point that we're at now. And there's 20 billion of them. So wait, can wait, you wait, give wait, me wait, wait, a, wait, wait, Can you give me a real quick? <laughs> Just an yeah, 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 yeah. If you don't think that there's extraterrestrial extraterrestrial life on another planet, you're an idiot, 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 idiot. Well, here's the here's the counter to that. Okay. Because there's 20 billion of them out there, but if our estimation of the of how long the um universe has been around it would ha- our earth had to be stable for about 3 to 4 billion years for us to finally form what we are which is about a third of the, uh, he says about a third of the age of the universe we had to be stable enough for us to evolve from whatever grubs we were millions of billions of years ago to now so there's so some for that, so there's some systems out there that may not have reached where we are now it's a very highly likely probability because but, there's a lot of shit floating around space. So for another exactly, planet, exactly different, different fucking, but for another materials, bro, to stay stable for that long, to evolve to as far as we've come, it's very unlikely. Like, what about black holes? We don't know fuck all about. We don't know what dark matter is, and we don't know what black yeah, holes are. You're right. For all we know, we we see we see, um, we see gas giants and stars and stuff being swallowed by black holes, right? For all we know, black holes are just like a fucking and then you know, we see shit a nexus. Like, and then we see shit like, yeah, the black hole swallowed this sun, but now it's spitting light back out. What the fuck is that about? Exactly. We have no idea. Exactly. Do you know what blows my mind? And this is some... If there's, if there's listeners that like to get high, l- listen to this shit when you're high. Like, this is some crazy shit. Give me... When look, you need to give them, you need to give them a, a warning intro or something <laughs> like a... Mm. <laughs> maybe, just the, maybe just the ominous... Get high. Listen to listening. this. Yep. So on three. When listen to this. Ready? One, two, three. Listen, listen to this. this. Nice. So <laughs> when we're young, right? We just look at our parents or like grown-ups. The as be all that, end all. Yeah, as though they just know everything about the world and we learn history and it's all fact, right? We're like, okay, this is all factual. As I'm getting older. I'm starting to realize that these scientists or grown-ups that know everything, they don't even know shit about... They don't even know why we dream, dude. They don't know shit about anything. They don't know shit about history. And that shit that we have, like, hard evidence of, like, we're looking through rocks and shit. Like, I'm sure they know factually a lot of things, but a lot of stuff is still just speculation like uh i guess that's probably about a million years there yeah like bro we haven't even explored something as tangible as the depth and bottom of the ocean we haven't even explored that and we're sitting here trying to figure out what fucking dreams are made of and what happens when we die and like what's going on in space and do aliens exist like no right. idea. I think I think it's a fascinating thing, and I'm I'm sorry to 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 have you deviate, but it's like it's almost like humanity is like the best way to describe to describe humanity is like hanging off a cliff with one hand holding onto the cliff, and the other hand that could you could use to pull yourself up is just you giving the finger to the universe. <laughs> Exactly. So you're just hanging there, and yeah, you, you have the ability to pull yourself up, but you're just like fuck you. Religion, <laughs> politics, all the shit. It's just like we're such we got a, no idea. We're such a fascinating species. And honestly, if there was a a a, a global a global um, community of different species in the universe, and they all came to Earth and were studying us, 
We would be the fucking, we would be the Hollywood of the universe. Do you know what we, yeah. We would be so fucking entertaining. Why would you come down to the planet, introduce yourself and try to make humanity better when you have this, this beautiful source of entertainment? It's beautiful, <laughs> it's poetic, but it's also fucking hilarious. You're absolutely right. And like... <laughs> Do you we know what we're really good we at? Are li- uh, hu- the human species is a living meme, dude. Do you know what we're really good at? What? Making shit up. <laughs> yeah. And then calling it fact. Yeah. We're just like, yeah, I think this is the theory. And then we do one test. It's like the whole thing. Have you heard about that? I showed you that thing where um, everything we experience is just a user interface. And we have no idea what the depths of what we're made of, like molecules and shit. We got no idea. And every test that we do, every scientific test, we're just like, uh, take electricity as an example, right? There's a, we make this battery. It's a thing. It holds charge. It can da 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 da. And then we have this multimeter and we go, well, if I put this here and I put this here, it tells me that there's 12 volts. Yeah, but we've just created a dial that's reacting to whatever we want to test. So we've just created another interface to say, well, if I do this, this dial tells me this. So we've just created another layer of interface to test what we want. So if, like, who knows? We could have gone a whole different direction with electricity and we would never even know. We would never know. Yeah. We would have no idea. We could be teaching, we could be using electricity the way we like, some people are experimenting with light. Yeah. An octopus cannot see color, but its skin can camouflage itself within in less than a second to its surroundings because its skin can see. Yeah. Its skin reacts to light bouncing off objects and hitting its skin and its pigments can just like I feel like the wrong uh, maybe maybe the wrong fish crept out of the ocean and we evolved, you know? <laughs> maybe we were like the fucking loser fish who wasn't as intellectually Get the fuck out of here. They're like fuck up he's like, All right, I'm going to go on Fuck you. Three million years later, I can kind of breathe out here. Yeah. You know, I don't need these gills anymore. Yeah. Bro, can you imagine if octopi, octopi decided to fucking go onto land? In the, the, in, the thing is, they can. No, no, no. But Who like, the fuck are we? But that we all. We can't survive underwater. Yeah. How long can they survive on land? I have no idea. Oh, fuck. I don't know. I think they just dry out, right? But they, they don't need to breathe out Dude, of the water. What about like whales and dolphins and stuff? They can submerge for Days, I think yeah. I'm not sure. And but they're like, still running on uh, huge tanks of oxygen. Yes, but they're still running. I was going to say they're still running on oxygen from the air. Why don't they fucking creep up on the land and start evolving with us? Because we'd have giants rolling around. Because we're only seeing the tiniest snippet of we the are. world. Yeah. So maybe if we skipped forward ten thousand years, oh. whales might no, be no, no, crawling no, no, no. onto the. Come on, not ten thousand. Ten million, maybe. Yeah, okay, you're 10 right. Million, you're right. Ten million. Ten million, and maybe. 10 million, maybe they've got the wheel. By maybe 10,000, the octopus could start doing shit, but could not be. not the whales. You're right. That'd could probably be. be a few million years. And then maybe, <laughs> maybe we'll get some whales that, that will evolve to something like a turtle yeah. where they can just come on land and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, blah. yeah. And just devour like trees, like they're like herbivores or something, right? Yeah, it's they're crazy. like, hmm, what can we eat up here? <laughs> Hello, the, oh, yeah. uh, the ocean seems to be full of microplastics from these <laughs> idiot humans yeah. making tires. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure that'll wash out. That'll, that'll come out in the wash. Yeah. Hey, we haven't, we haven't spoken about the sad thing about Joe Linden, Lind, Lindner. Of course, cheers to our, our fallen iron brother. Yeah, so Joe, he, Joe Linden, Lindner was his name. He was, he was a German guy. So he he's died and it's it's caused a big ripple because... Heart failure? Well, aneurysm. Where? But he is open... I don't know. He is openly... His last post on Instagram was openly talking about him going on TRT. So steroids. Trend. Yeah. Going on TRT and like the issues with it and the, the problems that he's had. I think he mentions like hernia problems and all this stuff. Like, and the way that industry now is, like anybody can just have a spotlight on them immediately. And he was obviously a one in a million guy. There's n- there's not many other people that can look like him. Mm. Nobody could get to that sort of lean level 
and have that crazy amount of like you could just see every fiber of his muscles naturally well naturally or on steroids true because it would have to be combined with his genetics mm. like someone can go on steroids and go crazy but they're still not going to look like him because he had just had like perfect way that his muscles were made up of and and the fact that his his chest did that rippling thing that's obviously a genetic that thing that was hectic yeah nobody nobody's going to be able to copy that but the fact that that is just a standard that's being set. So there's people out there that are like, I hope this is a good thing to say. Like, there's another one now that's that's passed away. Because the other crazy thing is, man. Dude, you're poisoning yourself. Do you know and where? Women, like, keep it. You got to compete. You got to compete. But you got to realize there's fucking issues. With do you know it. where he died? Where? Thailand. Just like Ziz. Just like Ziz. And in just like another guy called Leo and Longevity, but Leo and Longevity was a different one. Apparently, they found him like face down, blood and stuff. So I think he, yeah. he was maybe murdered. I don't know. Dude, I saw a video recently on TikTok and Instagram. It was probably the same video. A dude's like, I'm in Thailand. Getting my protein powder from Thailand. And he gets the trend. And he walks in and he goes, do you guys have trend? And she's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> over the counter. There yeah. you go. Yeah. So do you so think, that's where do you they think go. maybe they it, was get... a, it was a mixture of like a bad, bad shit? No, I don't think so, but that's just obviously where they go often because you can buy it freely. Mm. And it's probably safer than trying to buy it off a dealer in your gym in Australia. And cheap as chips. Safer because you're getting an actual product that was manufactured and put into a pharmacy yeah. rather than some dude that's like, yeah, yeah, this is it. Yep, this is definitely trend. Is it, what was it, its original purpose before humans, like growth, growth hormone? Is it for like horses was, or some shit? Yeah, I think it was used for horses and Fuck, dude. animal growth, that kind of stuff. Mm. I mean, there's plenty of steroids, I believe, being used in commercial meat making. Mm. Like we're oh, yeah, eating that antibiotics shit. and shit. Yeah, yeah, antibiotics and steroids. Like those chickens are pumped up. When you're, uh, when you're eating McDonald's, you're eating an antibiotic burger. I yeah. love the fact that you can now, even in Woolworths, get chicken that specifically says no antibiotics and no added hormones. Fuck yeah. Probably still steroids. I don't know. But, but super at fucking least. expensive just for that title too. But still, I'm happy to pay that. Fucking oath, dude. Yeah. But no, no antibiotics. I'm, I'm pretty anti-antibiotics. And that's probably... I just, I smashed the tofu in areas, bro. Fuck it. Yeah. Tofu and prawns, baby. Tofu and prawns. Yeah, dude. It's I mean, so good. I mean hey. prawns, I'm like, yeah, yeah, no, sweet. Cockroach of the ocean. And then you read like, do you know that female prawns get their eyes plucked out on prawn farms? You Who has that? time to sit there and pluck a fucking individual prawn's <laughs> Do eyes? Do you know out? that? That apparently happens. I didn't hear they that. They pluck no. their eyes out and just throw them back in, and apparently they're just like all disorientated. They're like, oh, my eyes. That's fucked up. That's fucked up. Tastes delicious, though. <clears throat> um, interesting fact about shiitake mushrooms, though. Shiitake. I was reading about, because uh, I was like, I love mushrooms. I'm just going to read the benefits. Sometimes I'll eat a new food group, right? Like New food group? Like, oh, not food group, but like sometimes, like I'll, um, like I love, you know, flying sauces, squash, the yellow squash. Ye yes. I grew up it's calling like, them like, flying like, sauces. It looks like a flower almost. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, the flying saucer, yeah. And yeah. I'll be like, I've eaten those all my life. I'm like, you know what? I'll goo goo. Goo -goo. I'll, goo goo. I'll Google benefits of squash and it'll be like, you know, and I'll be like, oh, fuck yeah, I love eating these. This is good. I'm eating healthy. And then recently I was like, I wonder what the most healthiest mushroom is. And then you've got your stock standard mushroom that you buy at the store, brown paper bag. And then you've got like, um, what's it, the tiger, tiger something mushroom? Uh, yeah, I know the one you know, you're yeah, talking yeah. about. Yeah. And so I was looking up the most healthiest mushrooms. Out, well, not the healthiest, but mushrooms with most health benefits. Shiitake mushroom, dude. I've eaten, I've eaten shiitake mushroom, but I've never actually gone out of my way to purchase it, right? Mm. Like sometimes you get it in snacks or like what, whatever. What do they look like? They look different to the normal They look like button. regular mushrooms, but there's obviously an old deviation in the appearance, right? Yeah, yeah. Dude, they're like, they're like, cancer fighting and like cell regenerating and just crazy amount of yeah. information on these much like prawns which i was surprised about and i was like oh my god went to my local chinese grocer and bought like four packs of shiitake mushrooms yeah. and one of the interesting things it's like you don't cook it normally like the best way to cook shiitake mushrooms one of them was like microwaving them oh, so i'd sit because there you're and, heating it up quicker and you're not you're not losing the nutrients would well, right? you know what 
is an interesting thing about microwaves. We'll get straight back on that. But Go interesting thing about microwaves is like people say like, oh, it nukes the food and it changes the proteins and da da da. But there's arguments to say that the heating up of the food is what changes the proteins in it. And if you're it's cooking like bread, food, dude. like if bread, you're cooking food, you're, you're act- heating it up for longer. Yeah, and it's actually changing it more than a microwave does because it does it quicker. So I don't know. There's arguments for both sides. But go ahead. Shiitake mushrooms. You can actually benefit from cooking bread uh, as opposed to just eating raw bread. Like there's there's so many things. So hear me look. Benefits of shiitake mushrooms, right? Yeah, give it to me. But yeah, so microwaving them, right? Yeah. Shiitake mushrooms are high in B vitamins and they serve as a food source of vitamin D. Some shiitake health benefits include the ability to aid weight loss, support cardiovascular health, that's your heart, fight cancer cells, improve energy levels and brain function, reduce inflammation, and support the immune system. So the usual stuff you'd expect from a healthy thing, right? There's so much, but anti-inflammatory and stuff like that. But like the fact I was mostly interested in like the cell cell repair kind of thing. Like I think that's just like Fungi and mushrooms in general. We've had we this just, chat. Yeah, where yeah. we just have no idea how much good they can do. And like I I I ordered a thing of that, and that's this is mainly because of their awesome marketing, and I've been getting it on Instagram heaps, but that yep. elixir coffee replacement, and it's just like a is mushroom. Is it like a reishi, drink. like a reishi mix? It's like it's just mushroom, uh, several different Extracts, mushrooms. Yeah. Ground up into a powder that you just dissolve like instant coffee. Yeah. And it doesn't taste bad at all. It's like got a little bit of sweetness with a little bit of an earthy taste. And it's like, is to it replace coffee? Is and it carby or? No caffeine. It's just meant to give you natural energy. I love that. So I've and, got. And how long have you been taking it? Uh, I only randomly do it because I, I try to like cold turkey coffee every now and then. Right now, starting a new job, I'm doing it. A coffee every course, second day course, in course, the course, office, course. you know, because you're like, you gotta have that energy swag, yeah. But other than that, like sometimes I'll just feel like I'm too dependent on a coffee in the morning, yeah. and then I'll just cold turkey, and I won't have coffee for like months. I do the same, dude. Yeah. I do the exact same. Yeah. Cycle it on and off. Yeah, but do me a favor if you can, or I'm happy to do it if you give me the brand. Do it. I want to. I want to test the theory of drinking coffee for a month. And then going onto this mixture that you've got here, and then wait, wait, oh. no, no, no. I'd say coffee for a month. Coffee for a month. No coffee for a month, and then onto this other stuff for a month, and see if there's a, a an increase or a reduction in energy. Oh, I can tell you now. You will feel so much clearer and better than on coffee. Because on coffee, yes, you're on, but then. As soon as it wears off, you are off. Well, that happens oh, yeah. to me. The, the I, crash. Get, I, get, I get big crashes. You plummet. I yeah. get big crashes. I feel like I'm quite susceptible to a lot of... It's um, around 2 to 3 o'clock, you reckon? Where it's, you're just like, I'm done. Yeah, it depends when I have I've it. I've got two yeah, hours absolutely. left to work. I'm fucking absolutely. done. It's like after you eat your lunch, your morning coffee's like, hey, man, I'm not doing my job anymore. Mm. I'm worn off. Yeah. And then you just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'm uh, like, oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> Nine to five. What is this? Fuck my life. I will I will fast and I'll have a nice long black. So that's no carbs in the morning. And I'll fast and I'll chew sugar-free gum throughout the morning so I don't have bad breath. Like, I brush my teeth every morning and night. But when you don't eat any food in the morning, you have morning breath still. Mm-hmm. So you got to chew gum and you have a nice long black. So you've got... Minty breath, but you have no carbs in your body, so your body's still fasting, right? And around midday every day, I'll have my lunch. And I found if I have a coffee in the morning and then I have a meal, no matter how carby or heavy it is, carby or protein-y, whatever, whichever, I crash around 1 o'clock because I'm just like, not not crash, but I'm just like, oh, fuck, I'm like 12.30, 12.45, I'm lethargic because I just ate a meal. My body's turned on to digestive mode, right? Yeah. But I find when I'm fasting and then I eat a meal, I still get that, oh, shit, my body's digesting food now. I'm a bit sleepy, but it, it lasts it, it lasts a lot less time. Debbie, so maybe like 15, like- 20 minutes. And then after that, for from maybe one one thirty to 2 onwards, I got energy again. Have you observed if it's linked to what you're eating too? Yeah, yeah. that's another yeah. interesting yeah. thing because I know if you eat carb-rich things, especially if you're going to eat like – a burger and chips, you're going to have far more of a lethargic, yeah. 
crash, food coma afterwards than if yeah, you were yeah. eating like a few vegetables and a steak. Yeah. You know? Well, my diet usually consists of either like, this is either stir fry or soup forms, mm-hmm. but there's almost little to no grains. So no wheat, no rice, no, none of that shit. It's usually veggies, tofu, lentils, and a bit of protein. Mm-hmm. Not like flesh protein, not just like protein that you get from veggies or fucking meat. And then it might be, um, it might be, it's usually that. It might be a soup, but it'll still have those same compounds yeah, yeah, in there as yeah, well. Yeah, so like, yeah, yeah. yeah I find, because I have a bit of sensitivity to wheat, I find that's the best for me. Mm-hmm. And I get everything I need. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but when I get home in the afternoon, I think this is more of a psychological thing because it's just like I'm home. I I tend to, I wouldn't say stress eat, but I tend to like comfort eat. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. doesn't it, everybody. Doesn't <laughs> everyone, right? So I'll get home, right? I'll get home from work. It's like I've had a very productive day. I've gone to the gym at 5 a.m. this morning. I have the whole afternoon to myself. I can relax, but then my brain is like, bro. This is a perfect time for you to be working on everything else that you need to be doing. So then I'll be like, okay, <laughs> yeah. fuck. Okay. So, and I'll tell myself, you know what? No, I've been, f- for like the personal things that I do outside of work, like writing or doing acting stuff, I'll be like, no, I think I've done enough this week or I'll work on enough stuff. But my brain will be like, no, nah, you could do more. You've seen enough YouTube videos and success stories. They say, always grind, always grind. So I was mm. just like, no. And I was just like, no, fuck you, brain. I've done. Three out of three out of four days this week, or like f- three yeah. out of five days this week, I've done something. I'm feeling great. I'm on, I'm eating healthy. I'm do, I've exercised enough this week. I want to relax and just watch a fucking Netflix. I want to watch The Good Doctor on Netflix, right? It, and my brain's like, no, no, no. So what do I do? I go and get a pack of chips, <laughs> and that's exactly. how. I, and then I'm eating, I'm yeah, eating yeah, saturated yeah, yeah. fats. Can I give you something though? That is a big thing about allowing yourself to relax because we there's so much content that's just like grind 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 you got to get up at 4 a.m you got to be on yeah. all the time all the time dude. all the time my my sister's big into her um health like she's she's doing a lot of she does a lot of yoga she's doing a lot of yoga stuff and she's a new parent so mm-hmm. she's doing a lot of stuff for Jackie, mothers as well killing it at the moment killing it very healthy she she shared this thing the other day which was just a, a little quote that was like, isn't it funny how when you allow yourself to relax with no guilt, suddenly all your gut issues disappear? And I was like, oh, shit. It's true. Yeah. And have you had so these days? there's da- got to be times where you just go, no, this is my relaxed time. Mm. Because you got to be kind relax. to yourself. You gotta I be relax kind to yourself. a lot. Yeah. But there's always guilt attached because you're like, oh, yeah. I should be doing something productive. Yeah. Beer, 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 beer. Such a first world problem, right? First world problem. Big time. But, dude, but it's and- like first world problem of people that are trying to potentially break out of the normal nine to five routine, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that silly mindset of, my life isn't good enough. Where I it's need really, to start exercising more, yeah. Whereas really, there's probably people out there that are just going to work, coming home, relaxing, and they're just much more satisfied than me. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just like, I feel no, like I need more. <laughs> I feel like, for me personally, I'm a very ambition, ambitious person. Mm. Like, I do acting. Like, there's a, it's a super ambition, right? And I know you're an ambitious person. We have different degrees of ambition. Like I want to do this, you want to do that. Doesn't mean one's bigger than the other. Mm. But I know you probably don't give yourself a break as well. Yeah, I know. But I love those days where it's almost like you. It's an affirmation. You'll come home and you go, "No, fuck you. I am gonna. I, you know what? I'm gonna order a fucking burger and I'm gonna eat a burger, body and brain. And you need to relax. I haven't ordered a burger in fucking three months or three weeks." I've been exercising, I've been doing this, and then you do it or something like that. Or you'll come home and you'll just sit on the couch and you're like, no, I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to turn my phone off. I'm going to relax. And you that's, end up sleeping on huge. the You end up sleeping on the couch for fucking like 12 hours or something ridiculous. Yeah. And you wake up and you're like, my body needed that. Yeah. And you have to listen to your fucking body. Yeah. Uh, that's huge. The turn your phone off because I don't think that <laughs> I don't think probably 98% of modern westerns will do that it's impossible here's the thing about phones right i'm 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 genuinely impressed by your ability to just chuck it on flight mode with no anxiety 
I'm a cold I turkey get so boy. much anxiety. I chuck my phone on flight mode. I'm like, if someone's trying to call me right now. Nah, I go cold turkey like a madman. Really? Dude. Anything in my life, I can go to cold turkey. And even if it's, it, I'm a bit of a masochist. Even if it caused me great degrees of pain, I'm like, hmm, I have to sort this out. Got to get through it. Exactly. Yeah, nice. Um, yeah, so I kind of looked up, um, I kind of looked up the amounts of radiation that people get from like phones and computers. And it's, it seems to be a, a, a hand as us, an e like it's whatever amount, right? It's you it, get, do you, again, know, do you know, do you know where you get a lot of radiation exposure where? when you're in the fucking plane? Dude. Oh, really? Up in the sky, dude, there's a lot yeah, of, lot right. of radiation up there. But like, and I looked up and it was just like, if you turn off, if you turn your phone on airplane mode, it's not receiving any information anymore. So it's it's a reduction. So I was like, oh, fuck it. It's probably not going to do that much of a difference because I'm it, around screens yeah. all day. But I like to go to sleep back at all my, since I was probably about like 22 or 23 years old, I read it was like, keep your phone at least 10 meters away from you. That's a kind of like a radiation I, distance. Right? I have a friend who has a rule with his girlfriend that he lives with, mm -hmm. no phones in the bedroom. Yeah, so yeah, So in the true. evening, they plug it in in the kitchen, yep. leave their phones there, they go to the bedroom. That's the time for them to talk. That's good. Do whatever they need to do. That's good. And sleep. Yeah. I will have, all my life, I've always turned my phone, internet and stuff off, but I've always had my alarm on my phone. I don't have like a beep, 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 beep. I should yeah. get one, but I would turn that off and then I'd try to sit the phone maybe a meter away from me, right? And it's good as well. Like if you're one of those people who can't get up early in the morning and you struggle, if you sit your phone, not next to your head, not right down where you keep your water or whatever, but if you keep that shit like, like three feet away from you, then you're forced to get up because the alarm's going the off. Alarm off. Yeah. And then yep. you're like, fuck, I'm up now, one. right? Yep. So with that being said, now that I've got airplane mode on while I'm asleep, I checked my alarm still goes off with airplane mode on. Oh, of so course, could, yeah. So, like, I'm not getting the radiation exposure that I think I'm getting. And I can still have my alarm going off. So, it's a win-win. Yeah. There's different arguments that I've seen about the radiation. Like, there's some some scientists that reckon there's no proof that it can harm you. But Have they been doing tests for the last 30 years, though? No, Probably exactly not. right. Yeah. Exactly right. So, like, and and for me, I'm always skeptical of that kind of stuff because i'm like yeah you're not you're not able to test it with the tools that you've currently got correct you we've need got to no do idea. a study for at least 20 or 30 we've years. got no idea because i don't know whether it's you know when you're on your phone for ages sometimes you're laying down it gets on warm ages it gets warm not just that but sometimes i feel and i i probably should test this out but sometimes i feel like it's just because i've got my hands above my head holding them up but sometimes I feel like my like thumb and fingers go like a little bit numb as if they're going to sleep. And I don't know if that's just because I'm holding them up and the blood's not I'd circulating I'd say it's probably. that. It's probably more that. Eight out of ten. But sometimes that. I just feel like, oh, my God, it's radiation in my hand. But yeah. it's probably just the fact that I've been holding my hands up yeah. doing weird shit. You know what happens if that's the case and you're a bit scared about radiation? Shiitake mushrooms and prawns. You're all good. <laughs> Do you know what else? What? If you're scared about radiation and you think that your hand is infected with radiation, yeah. you're probably going to cause more damage just by thinking that. Yeah, because anxiety, right? Well, not, not just anxiety, but just the fact that your subconscious brain is going, my hand is damaged. You're telling, man, I've been looking into... The yeah, heal, right? Yeah. The observer. You, I've been looking into subconscious, your brain, man. You, like human beings, right? I can sit in a room and nothing's going on with me, right? And I can sit there and think of like an incident where a plane crashes right in front of me and like my family dies. And you can make yourself sweat. You can, you can make, make yourself, yourself get sweat. sweaty palms. Yourself, we, yeah. we literally influence our, our genomes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. So That's why don't, it, think, don't be anxious. Be happy. Be positive. Live a good life. So this is what I think. When you hear about like people, oh, this guy was on the phone all the time. Now, this is some woo-woo shit that I'm about to get into, but... I fuck with woo-woo. Yeah. So the guy is on the phone all the time. Da, 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 he got ear cancer. It fucked him up. He died. And they're like, oh, phone radiation, ear cancer. And then someone else says, well, there's no proof that the phone radiation could have caused that. And my next thought is, if true, if the phone radiation cannot harm the human body, why did the guy get ear cancer? 
We don't know what he did for a job. Mm. What if the only thing he was doing on the phone all day was just negative conversations all day long, stressful conversations Correct. all day long? Where's that stress coming from? From the speaker against your ear. Mm -hmm. Your body's like, holy shit, why is there so much stress right there? Boom. Mm -hmm. That's fucking your shit up. I got one last example like that, and then we can cancel it. <laughs> and we can get cancelled. <laughs> so there's a guy, there's a documented story. I don't know names and stuff, but I can get it for you. This dude, he was an older gentleman. He had like, they went and checked in in on him and he had like a, he had like problems breathing and he had like spots in his lungs and they said, yeah, mate, you got lung cancer and shit. But what we're going to do is they placeboed him and they said, we're going to use an experimental plus drug. He didn't know it was placebo. Yeah. <laughs> that's going to neutralize the cancer in your lungs. He took it and then they did the studies and it was gone. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, holy fuck, it worked. Awesome. Yes, I'm I'm healed. They never told him that it was a placebo. Then the study came out and it was publicized. He read it and said, These motherfuckers, I had a cancer and it was all fake. And then they he went and went back and he had chest problems and they checked it out again and the cancer came back, right? Came back because he so believed this, that it was exactly, gonna come back. This dude freaks out, goes to the hospital, he's 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 saying his last rites, everything like that, you know. They did a scan of his chest. And it was a false scan and he had no cancers in his lungs or on his chest at all. But the dude died three days later and they never got to tell him, mate, it's, 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 it's fake. Oh. The dude literally died and there was no reason for him to die. He had no other physical ailments. <laughs> That's some woo-woo shit. I've got another woo-woo woo -woo. shit story. Exactly the same. Go. Finish him. Finish the beer. There we go. There's another woo woo story just like that. Guy gets locked in a walk in freezer. Yep. <laughs> Guy gets locked in a walk in freezer at his workplace overnight. And he's like, oh my God, I'm in a freezer. I'm going to die. It's fucking cold. Da, da, da. He dies. This is, I don't know the facts about this. He dies. They come in the next day. His body temp wasn't that bad. The freezer was broken, it wasn't even on. He just, like it would have been cold in there, but he put but himself he shouldn't into have a, died. He put himself into a level of hysteria. Yeah, apparently oh. the cold wouldn't have killed him, bro. Do you? All right, <laughs> everyone, we're going to end it there. But thank you yeah, so much for listening. Fucking with some woo woo shit. Make sure that you're extremely high for this episode. Post <laughs> Van Liter podcast. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>